Today is an historic day to mark the achievements and the legacy of the late great Arthur Wharton. It's inspirational. It's an incredible story. It's symbolic if you can see that it's in the centre of a St George's Cross. It's absolutely amazing. I never thought it would happen, but it has. This is the beginning of, you know, a true recognition for the contributions of the black and ethnic minority groups to this country. It's been a long journey, but it's been one that, you know, it's been an absolute honour and a privilege to be part of, really. You don't have time to feel, you know, the stresses and strains of championing something like this because your own adversity can never match the adversity that he faced. The more you read about him and the more you hear what he did in his lifetime, it, it just puts everything into perspective where we are now with all the issues that we've got going on. So it's a pleasure for me to be here. I think it will just prompt more open discussions about diversity and whether that's race or gender or sexuality. The more people are talking openly, then the better that can be. The people of Darlington and took to him. So to relate to him in those days is very, very difficult. The only way I can relate to him, because he was the first black player to have a, a contract in the Football League, and I am to be the first black player to play at full international level. So and those parallels you can you know, but generally I just couldn't, I, don't, I wouldn't like to imagine what he must have gone through in the 1800s playing football. He was a cricketer, played for Yorkshire. He was um, a rugby union player, rugby league player, a champion cyclist, and if that all wasn't enough, he was the first man ever to run 100 yards, it was yards in those days, in 10 seconds. They used to call it an even time. When you consider that Arthur Wong could run 100 yards in 10 seconds, the fastest man in the world, Darling and put him in goal. No wonder we're not in the football league anymore, you know. But it's a, it is a source of humour to all of us in football. It's made in bronze. It's been cast from uh, clay, and it, I should think about approximately 42 or so pieces that they had to cut it in to, to cast it, and then they welded it all together. The FA have been full square behind us all along. Similarly with FIFA, first time of asking came on board, the UEFA, the PFA, it, we've been fortunate, but it's been spread out over time. You know, don't get me wrong, it wasn't without some kind of a fight, but the fight was to give the right information with the right message, but most importantly, for the right reasons.